Welcome to the Amiibo Repair Centre. Today I'm going to be looking at upgrading this uh, Bose Soundock Series 2 with the uh, SD20 Bluetooth upgrade kit. So the SD20 has got this connector, but it's also got Bluetooth, high quality Bluetooth streaming built in. Right, so we've done a quick look at this. So this is a customer dock. It's actually one received from a customer today, so we're going to go through it. It's looking pretty grubby now, but by the time it's all been cleaned and had the cosmetic treatment, it will look great. And what we use, we use um, isopropyl alcohol, a broad paintbrush to brush out the dust and all the cracks and, and uh, crevices. And then we wipe over with the IPA. You can see that these, all these handprints on the back, if I can get a cloth, put a little drop of IPA on the, on the back here and wipe. You can see they, the handprints come off and then you can just follow up with the car polish and it comes up really shiny, this black polycarbonate plastic. Anyway, we digress slightly. So that's the dock and you know you've got a, a sound dock too because it's got this curved front. All the other sound docks, uh, sound dock one has the grill inset into a plastic surround all the way around whereas this, you can see it ends here and it's curved around. We don't necessarily have to take this grill out, okay. Now, uh, most customers send their unless you're sure that your power supply is working uh, send the power supply in as well but don't send the cable with the 13 amp mains lead for a repair but this is showing you how to fit it yourself this is a home repair okay now one thing I've got an I picked up this customer didn't send their power supply in but I've got one of our test units you can see a well weathered test unit you can see that's a Zimbibo unit on it out of the drawer in the test department to make this video and it's quite handy actually because I noticed <laughs> when I went to plug it in that there is a problem with this and it's a very common problem and I'll show you what it is. So if your dock is not working before you condemn it for a repair check your power supply and I'll show you one of the common issues here and it's worth just digressing slightly just to have a look at this. So if you look at the actual DC barrel connector, this is the DC barrel connector that goes in. Also look at the grub on this. If um, if that's not making good connection, I'm going to use a little bit of the alcohol again just to clean that up. This has been in test for ages, but to, you can see there was some sticky stuff on there. That's not going to help you. Give it a bit of a polish. Uh, but the main problem with this one is I've got the test drawer. Can you see that pin in there? That pin is the 0 volt rail for the power supply for those of you who are technically minded. But you can see, if I just hold it like that and angle it in the light, you can see in there is a gold plated pin which has been bent over to one side and that's quite often that can get broken off or bent over and um, the name of the game here is to straighten the straightener up a bit let's see if I can do it for you now bend it back it may snap off but generally speaking if they've only been bent once not too violently they will survive wrap up that and straighten the pin so you're looking for that pin to be sitting there dead center okay so check your pin is straight and standing straight up proud it should be about five millimeters below the ledge of this lip this that's the ground but that's naught volts that's minus 18 and then the inside ring there is plus 18 so it's an annular connector there's three three electrodes one there one on the inside of that um, cylinder one on the outside all right and there you are so that's straight so that should work so we try that so I've repaired the uh, test power supply for the uh, for the test team. Okay, so the next thing to test: plug your unit in. Um, it, this connector might be broken. There might be something else wrong with the dock. But the first thing you want to do is put your power in, and turn the power on. And if you listen carefully, I'll tilt this up. You may be able to hear it better. You hear that beep beep, and that's one beep from each speaker. It goes beep beep. I'll do it again. I'll hold it up close to the camera so you can hear it. There you go, you heard it there. So that's the beep you're looking for. Turn it off. Yeah. So if you don't hear those two beeps, it means that the thing's not initializing problem. It's probably not this connector that's at fault. You could change it and put the kit in, but unless you get those two beeps, um, if you don't get the two beeps, then you might want to come to us for a bit of advice about what to do next. It may not be the, uh, the front board that's gone wrong, but you can see all this in the Sound Dock 2 diagnostics. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to assume that you've referred to the Sound Dock 2 diagnostics and your dock is making the beeping noise and you've checked the power supply. 
and all you want to do is fit the um, SD20 kit. So let's just push that to one side for a moment, move that little stand out of the way. So what's in the SD20 kit? The SD20 kit consists of a BC7A kit, this is a universal Sound.1, Sound.2 Bluetooth upgrade kit with a 30 pin connector, it's the BC7A, it supersedes the old BC7. So the BC20 kit has got a BC7A and you also receive a new base moulding here, new plastic base moulding and two rubber feet. Okay. Now you can't fit a BC7 into a Soundlock 2 unless, unless you have this moulding because this moulding has a cutout here to, uh, to a relief in the base moulding and this extra pocket here so the Bluetooth electronics can fit in. Okay. So don't try and fit a BC7A to a Soundlock 2 unless you have a replacement moulding from us which is this Soundlock 2 replacement base moulding with this extra pocket in to accommodate the Bluetooth. If you do and you tighten it up you'll destroy the BC7A and crush the electronics. Right? So that's word of warning. So the first thing to do is just to peel off these rubber feet and stick the rubber feet into the pockets on the, on the base moulding to get that one over and done with. These two rubber feet come on a little strip Self adhesive, very sticky, so we've got our rubber feet on, all right. So that's that, that's the base molding as well. But this, they're all the same board, all right. So we end up with the T8 screwdriver for undoing the screws in the base molding, which I'll show you in a box. And a BC7A. Carefully, how you take it out of the bag, don't rip it out of the bag, do it carefully, right. Your BC7A may or may not have this um, overlay. Just repeat, you do not need this overlay. You do not need to fit this overlay when you're fitting this to a, a Sound Dock 2, okay? So the overlay is not required. If there's one in your kit, don't use it, all right? So the parts you need is, are these, these three parts, or oh, three items. The moulding, the board, and the screwdriver, all right? Okay, so when you get the board, it'll have a protective connector in here, which you can just pull out when you're ready to uh, fit. All right, so let's just stop dust and things going in. It's back in. So let's have a quick look at the board for a moment. This is the BC7A. You can see the Bluetooth module, the approved uh, Bluetooth 5 module, is at the bottom. Don't press this down hard on a. When you handle this, just handle it with care. Don't press it down or stand things on it or generally mistreat it. And on each end you've got two volume buttons, one each end, that's the standard uh, volume buttons, the electronics, the docking connector, and also, um, if I just zoom in on this, I'll just explain this connector to you, because you need to uh, understand how this works. So we're now looking at the 24-way ribbon connector on the edge of the board, and this is the umbilical connection to the actual main electronics in the dock. And you can see that um, on the Bose units, they just have a ribbon cable which just pushes in and out. I'll show you in a moment but this is a zero insertion force connector and in order for you to be able to slide the ribbon in you need to push this collar out both ends gently disengage that collar and in that position the ribbon will slide in with no resistance and once the ribbon is fully in you then close this collar and the act of pushing that collar back in will clamp the connector and make a very strong connection so the ribbon cable can't come out and give a good electrical connection. So just to recap, before you actually fit it you need to make sure they're out otherwise you won't be able to plug the ribbon cable in. I'll show you this again in a moment but it's important to know. All right. So there's not really much to fitting this kit actually. Um, there she is. So let's, let's just get the dock back again and let's start with the installation. Okay, word of warning, if you're standing the dock on its top surface, as I am now, if the work surface isn't smooth, uh, or you've got something on or a screw or something, or some grit, it will scratch your dock. If you've got a very nice dock, you'll notice that it's easily scratched. So what I've done is put some of the bubble wrap bags underneath just to prevent it so uh, from scratching the dock. So now you can see what we've got here is one foot missing. There's a rubber foot missing on this one. In fact, there's a rubber foot missing there as well. Um, yeah, so there's two rubber feet missing, so I do have a spare foot, let's put that on. We don't need to put the one on there because we're changing that moulding, remember we're throwing it away, so I'll just put the extra rubber foot on there for this customer. 
so that we've got all the feet required. And what we're going to do is just um, take a screwdriver, a standard cross point screwdriver, a Phillips, and just loosen these four screws on the top. You've got four screws, one, two, three, four. We're just going to loose them, loosen them a couple of turns. Don't take them right out, just loosen them. The reason we loosen them is there's a 24-way flat ribbon cable trapped between this lid and the base of the sound processor inside the electronics and it's held in place by that lid and if these screws aren't loose and it's sometimes difficult to pull that cable out and we need to pull that cable out slightly so we can plug, unplug and replug the, the, uh, the new board in. So you um, then take your T8 screwdriver that comes in the kit and remove the three screws in the half moon moulding, these three here. Okay, don't lose them because <laughs> they, they are pretty small and they're quite difficult to replace. Okay, so you just lift the front edge like this and then this moulding, okay, if you don't lose your screws, this moulding will come out, okay. So I've lifted that out complete with the three screws, apart from one which is just dropped inside there I think, yeah it has. Alright, okay, so there's your three screws. Now, looking inside, you can see this is the old docking board. Right, so that's the original Bose docking board. So we need to unplug that. So we unplug this, pull it forward, just pull out a little bit of ribbon cable, maybe 10, 15 millimetres, three quarters of an inch, and then just grasp it between your thumb and finger and then unplug and it comes away. Now, if you've had any spillage on this thing, any liquid has come down inside the dock, then you might find this cable has been uh, damaged and you don't want to plug this all back together with a damaged cable. If I just zoom in on that for a moment for you. 24 contacts are all shiny and attached. None of them are peeling off. None of them are blackened or corroded or dirty. So that's a good cable. Um, sometimes you'll find that the cables, the actual connect contacts have come off and they're leaning across or they're stuck down on the body of the cable in which case don't try and plug it in, it's absolutely pointless. If you've got a dodgy rigman cable that's been damaged or corroded, you know, with drink or something that's been spilled in it, what you're looking for is 24, nice shiny, one millimetre spacing, this is one millimetre between here and here, here and here, spacing contacts. And if they don't look like that on your dock, then don't plug it in, just contact us and we'll send you a new ribbon cable, all right? So check your ribbon cable, most important. You can see that sometime in this in this dock's life, it has actually there's staining on here. Look, so it has had actually had some liquid spilt in it at some point, but it hasn't been to the degree which has caused any problem. You can see on this board here. Can you see that corrosion there? See where the liquid and the and the electricity and the electrolysis has taken place and corroded these vias here. Very subtle, but it's happened. No, it's very minor on this one. Alright, so anyway, now it's time to fit our board. Actually, there is one more operation to do, which is, yes, there is. I don't do this very often, you can tell. Let's just pop the screws out that we need. So we're going to remove the screws from here. Okay, so that moulding, three screws. We have our three screws. And you'll notice on this moulding here, there are these spongy rubber pads, and you need to trans you need to peel those off from there, and just transfer them onto the other mould. So stick them on there. So see, so there's one here. I'll zoom in slightly so you can have a better look. And just stick them back on there. Right, stick them flat. So now we have this with the with the rubber uh, spongy stops. It's basically to give the contacts a bit of a better feel, okay? So we've done that. We've got our three screws. We've got our fully loaded molding. And then bring the dock back into, into view. All right, so here we are. We're now gonna fit the BC7A. Take the board, remove this, connect, this um, connector cover. And now it's time to pull out the stops, the uh, engaging stops. Now you take your ribbon, 
I move this forward very slightly. Lay the B C seven A on top and then bend this over and slide the ribbon into position. Okay. Goes in quite easily, look. And the, you can see it's fully engaged and there's an equal gap at both sides. And then whilst it's in position you just need to push the locking shoulders home. Make sure uh, one thing we do see quite often is that when the customer pushes one end in the other end comes out and they do one end and then they do the other and this one comes out slightly so you have to do each one two or three times and then make sure you have an equal amount of connectors poking out at both ends and that the ribbon is fully in. Okay, We've had docs sent back from the customer saying oh, I can't get it to work can you help and we open the, the uh, unit up and one of these is just poking out and with this not fully clamped home and then the, not all contacts will make contact therefore the board won't work right so that's fully plugged in it's in there both locking collars are in both sides fully engaged so we can swivel this over here like this and drop the connector down through the hole okay now we take our, our, our molding and we just drop that into position so tang on the end here goes under this edge down on top of the board and then we just pop in the three screws There we go, so all three screws are in. It's sitting down nicely. Make sure they're all tight. Okay. And we look along this edge and we've got it's all fitted and sitting down flush and the edges are all level. So that is essentially it. So the last operation to do is then to tighten down the screws we loosened at the beginning when we first started. There we are, and if I just turn it over you can see it's now fitted. Okay, so that's it. The board has been fitted, just needs cleaning now, and then we'll go through the next video and we'll go through the uh, the function of the BC7A fitted to the Sound Dock 2. Alright, so that's the upgrade to Bluetooth completed.